It's June 5th, 2015. Steve took a cue from Bruce Jenner. So tonight, I welcome Skyla Ballard, Steve's new transitional name, <laughs> to the show. <laughs> I still make love to Volkswagens. <laughs> no, this is Skyla will be... Sky will be joining me on the uh, coming 40 and Slip three-way show. But tonight, she's going to read the 40 and Slip news. Attempt to. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I guess we'll start with the uh, story about the marsupial that likes I, to I, I make was gonna itself say, to I was going to say that you have to actually read after... <laughs> After the, the music stops. Is that my cue? That's, yeah, when the music okay. ends, that's when you start. So far, okay, so far you're doing a spot on Steve Alcorn. Great. I hope I'm making you proud, Steve. Okay, from sciencealert.com, scientists have found two new marsupial species that mate themselves to death. Scientists from Queensland University of Technology in Australia have discovered two new species of antechinus, a genus of tiny carnivorous marsupials whose males are wiped out each spring after mating themselves to death. The antechinus have become famous for their strange sexual habits. Each year, all the males in the species go on a mating and fighting rampage, which only ends when they're dead. Scientists from the Queensland University of Technology in Australia have discovered two new species of antechinus and the genus of tiny carnivorous marsupials. Oh, I already read that part. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> the antechinus. <laughs> the antechinus have become famous for their strange sexual habits. Um, it sounds like a pretty insane evolutionary strategy. This is um, an annual halving of the population, and it ensures the antechinus mothers have enough spiders and insects to eat while they raise the next generation. Um, a total of five new antechinus species over the past three years have been discovered with a 50% increase in the known diversity of this oversexed genus. Uncovering new mammals in developed countries like Australia is pretty rare, and the fact that we found even more antechinus species hints at the biodiversity jewels still waiting to be unearthed, said Professor Baker. They like, they have a, wow. an orgy to death. I, I, I don't know if I could do that. Until the pussy was in front of me, like the minute Is there any I, the minute that, I've that does it? the minute I've got a rock hard on, and then somebody says to me, "But you're gonna die." Yeah. All right. <laughs> I'm in. Like um, imagine it exhausting yourself to the point of death, like. That's pretty traumatic, you know. You just 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 fucking fall apart. <laughs> I can imagine it at this point in my life. There's sometimes when I get done and I'm just like, "Oh, ow." <laughs> that was definitely a weird story. It kind of reminds me of like the Black Widows, you know, they mate and then the female kills the male, but well, a lot this of, is a little bit a lot of, a lot of spidey a lot of spider species do that. They the really? males, yeah, a, a lot of, uh, w w when the, when spiders copulate, I guess is what, what you'd call it. I don't know. Very I'm, good. I'm not a, I'm not a fucking does. expert, but when, the, when the <laughs> male shoves the big sperm sacks that he's carrying around on his hands, because he jerked off into his hands and he looks like he's got like boxing gloves on, he shoves them up into the, the female spider and then supposedly in some of the, the species, how it works is when that happens, the interaction causes the female to go into some type of a, you know, you know, I guess you could, con you know, equate it to an orgasm. And then while she's all uh -huh. fucked up, he like bolts. He's like, I'm getting the fuck out of Dodge. And so that's how they try to get away. Mm hmm. Thank you for that colorful description of spider codex. It's that fucking great. Beautiful. Good stuff. Great. Well, speaking of insects from Fox San Antonio News, here's a story about a newly discovered soul-sucking Dementor wasp named after Harry Potter. This is in Germany. 
German scientists have documented more than 100 new species of wasps, including one named after a Harry Potter character. I don't know about you, but I, I really fucking hate wasps. I got stung a lot by them when I was little. The wasp is named the soul-sucking Dementor wasp. Scientists say it's been living in obscurity in a jungle in Thailand until last year. The wasp injects venom into a mass of neurons on the cockroach's belly that turns the roach into a passive zombie. What the hell? Cockroach wasp venom blocks receptors of the neurotransmitter octopamine, which is involved in the initiation of spontaneous movement. With this blocked, the cockroach is still capable of movement, but is unable to direct its own body. It gets worse for the wasp's unfortunate victim. Once the cockroach has lost control, the wasp drags its stupefied prey by the antenna to a safe shelter to devour it. Visitors to the Museum of Four... Naturkunde in Berlin. Sorry, anyone who speaks German, if I totally screwed that up. <laughs> voted to name the wasp <laughs> Ampulex dementor in a poll, noting the insect similarity to the dementors that terrorize Harry Potter and his fellow wizards. Harry Potter creator, creator J.K. Rowling retweeted its photo, and the buzz helped propel the insect J. with a Q? creepy sting. Did you just say J.K. Rowling? Oh, I'm sorry, J.K. <laughs> Rowling. My bad. I don't read Harry Potter, pardon me. Okay, um, possibly for eons before it had lived in obscurity in an enormous Southeast Asian jungle until it was discovered last year. One almost got Harry Potter at Hogwarts once, but a schoolmate sprang to Potter's aid. Thank heavens for that. They and that is the end of the insect Patronum. I, I don't think the cock cockroaches have wands and can cast, you know, protection spells. They should have called mm -hmm. it the Dracula wasp because it turns it into a fucking Renfield. They should have called it the zombie wasp. Did you hear the description? It basically turns it into a zombie. I don't like that. That would have been a badass I'm not, name. I'm not big on the Dementor. I like. They should have called it the Dracula wasp. It bites it. It like fucking wanders around. It acts stupid like Renfield. And then later on, like Renfield's useless. Well, that depends on which zombie... I mean, which type of vampire we're talking about? Because you know, there's like two different types of, of vampires. Oh, fucking! It, the one, that, it, it the depends, one that's it depends on it depends on what fucking books you're reading, Skyla. Holy shit! I guess. <laughs> well, you know, there's the the vampire that is more zombie-ish, like, but it's still not a zombie. And then there's like the Dracula vampire that's smart and sexy and does all the badass things, you know, uh. like that. Vampires can be pretty sexy. No, the va vampires Just should saying. be dirty and disgusting and gross. Like the strain. I like that. I, I like that. that shit. I do not like that. Ah, oh, it's no. fucking great. You know what? I heard you and Steve talking about it. I guess it was like a year ago. No, that would have been, been that would have been that would have been Matt and I talking about that. Steve has oh, no fucking frame of, a frame of mind or concept. <laughs> Okay, well, I heard you and Matt talking about it. So I was like, shit, I'm going to go check this out because I like vampires, okay? I uh, was not prepared. I, I didn't even make it past the first episode when that vampire smashed that guy's head into the ground. I'm like, fuck this. This is not for me. I don't like those type <laughs> of vampires. I like the romance, the sexiness, you know? That's what I'm looking for. That was just like a, an ugly-ass fucking monster. No. I'll leave that for the zombies. No, okay? That's a great show. I don't like it, but to each his own, Chris. Yep. Okay. Now, moving on. Um, from the Star Tribune here, we have a, a – I like this story. That's why I saved it for last. I can't, even, I can't even beat on this story. I know because I sent it to you. I, mm. I, I'm, I, I can't even – like nothing I can say. There's like fucking nothing I can say. <laughs> well, it would be kind of messed up if you did. But I know. Anyway, I'm sure you'll find something, Chris. You'll well, find something. Maybe. So. <laughs> Okay, boy dreams of finding Bigfoot becomes reality in Kettle Moraine Forest, West Bend, Wisconsin. When five-year-old Lincoln Egger set out in mid-May to search for the illustrious Bigfoot at the Kettle Mountain State Forest Pike Lake Unit in Hartford, no one could have predicted the tearful reaction that it set off. 
It still chokes me up talking about it and brings tears to my eyes, said Lincoln's mother, Kelly Edgar of West Allis. Three years earlier, Lincoln was diagnosed with a brain tumor and was put through a series of surgeries and medical procedures to reduce the size of the growth. The process resulted in many side effects, including seizures, eye surgery that paralyzed the right side of his body temporarily. Because of the strength that he's shown, the Make-A-Wish Foundation agreed to grant Lincoln just about any wish he could dream up. Typically, wishes Make-A-Wish grants range from a trip to Disneyland or to meeting famous celebrities and athletes, but Lincoln had bigger ideas. He wanted to be the first person in the world to find Bigfoot. It threw us off, Kelly said, of Lincoln's wish. It wasn't something we discussed as a family. Kelly said she thinks Lincoln is fascinated by Bigfoot because of the trips they'd taken as a family. We've seen a couple of episodes of Finding Bigfoot, but it's not something that we'd watch every week. Um, let's see. Regardless, right when Allie Christian, a volunteer wish grantor for Make-A-Wish, heard of Lincoln's desire, she was determined to make it a reality. It was a different, it was a different wish from what I've done in the past, Crispin said. Lincoln is a man of different tastes. He loves adventure, hiking, and camping. We knew that this one would be extra fun to plan. Chrisman and her co-workers got right on it, making calls and laying the groundwork. She connected with the RV Center in Richfield, who donated a camper trailer to the Edgar family. She said the donation is intended for the Edgar family to also go on a camping trip to Yellowstone National Park. Next, Chrisman contacted Bob Cohn of Bayside for assistance in providing a proper character to portray Bigfoot. Cohn is a member of the 501st Legion, an international fan base organization dedicated to creating and wearing film-accurate Star Wars costumes. He offered up a Chewbacca costume and agreed to play the role of Bigfoot for the big day. Uh, can you do a good Chewbacca? No, I'm not. That's one no. I've never been able to do. Oh and my I God. can't. And I took fucking years of Spanish. My Spanish teacher told me I had a great Spanish accent, but I couldn't fucking roll my R's. I swear to God, I worked with this guy in college, and he did the best Chewbacca. Like, he took, he could totally do, like, voiceovers or shit for Star Wars. He was, like, right on. Now, I'm not even going to tr- attempt to um, do my own Chewbacca voice, but I thought I'd just ask, because you seem like the type of guy who might be able to do a Chewbacca, nah, I, but I'm going to continue. I cannot, I cannot do a Chewbacca impression. That is one that has always eluded me. Maybe someday, Chris. Okay, back to the story. He was so excited the whole time, Roxbury said. He'd stop. He'd pull out his toolbox where he had his horn to make Bigfoot calls. It was a moment that I'll never forget. Soon enough, Lincoln discovered the camper at the end of the route. Instinctively, Lincoln let out Bigfoot calls, looking for a response. It came as a shock to him what happened next. When he got to the camper, he noticed the prints, I guess, foot tracks, leading up to the summer to the camper door cone said he started to call for me so i responded naturally lincoln opened the camper's door and was face to face with an eight foot tall bigfoot whose mouth was jammed full of his favorite food marshmallows now isn't that sweet that was a nice story Uh, that is just heartwarming that's not a typical uh 40 and slip story so it was nice to put that in there it's a nice story but it can lead into this for me okay i knew it was coming (laughs) Let's hear it. For all you, <laughs> for all you motherfuckers that are out there doing bullshit research, this poor kid is just wants to find fucking Bigfoot. So why don't you get up off your lazy asses and do some actual r- real research? R- r- research. Like re hmm. r- 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 real. Well, tell me how you would define real research. Because Scientific the, fucking research. Yeah. Not like, let's go out in the woods and I'll drink beer around the fucking campfire <laughs> and smoke some weed. And I'm all fucking for that. I'm all for like going out in the woods and fucking having a good time and shooting the shit. But that's yeah. not fucking Bigfoot research. Don't try to equate it with Bigfoot research. Don't think that because you got 20 fucking people sitting around a campfire singing fucking songs and talking about bullshit that that's Bigfoot research. Because it's not. You want to put a fucking biologist in the field and have them actually doing scientific... uh, 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 the, 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 there's my fucking Steve Alcorn moment for the night. Um, I had a few tonight, but it's okay. Actually recording the events, uh, the situations, the uh, you know, day by day, 
and going out there and doing the fucking legwork that's actual scientific method, until you show me that, then it's 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 horseshit. It's a bunch it's a bunch of crap. Uh, and and just today, I see and I and Greg Newkirk. Uh, um, I forget the website. I will try to find it and post it underneath. It's it's on the forty and slip like page. If you haven't clicked like on that on Facebook, please do. Um, he posted a story today about someone who posted in a group uh, an, a, a, a body, a, a human oh, body yeah, that they that. had found oh, that's and then tried to pass it off as a fucking Bigfoot. And that is the shit that we get. And that's why I get fucking irritated constantly. I, I have not had a chance to read that. I, I was browsing through and I saw it. I'm like, oh, shit, I got to go back and check that out. So briefly tell me, like, they just, like, happened upon a dead body? Or, like, how the hell did they come Supposedly, across Supposedly now, they, now they're saying that the, the men in black took the body away and yada, yada. I didn't go too much into it, uh, look too much into it. I saw that Greg had, had posted it. And I was what kind of watching the back and forth of what was going on on a post that he had made about it, and uh, he has a, a a great blog over there. Uh, actually, I will pop that up right now while I'm sitting here because I can probably find it really fucking quick. Ba da 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 da. We need like fucking. Oh music. no, that was Mario that it, time though. It is that. weak. <laughs> In it is the week not the it is weekinweird.com. That's week i n weird.com. Uh, and Greg Newkirk posted that today, and it, it just it, infuriating, just f- fucking infuriating. But, um, yeah, it's disgusting, <laughs> yeah. And that, folks, wow. is your 40 and slip news it- with a transsexual Steve Alcorn. Ha ha ha!